Hey everyone, my name is Flippy. The new Saints Row 4 trailer entitled War for Humanity has just been released. So as always, I'm going to do another trailer analyst. Brace yourselves, this is going to be epic. Okay, the trailer starts out with Zinyak giving a message to the human race or to the Saints themselves about how they're guilty of crimes against the Zen Empire. We still cannot get a good look at Zinyak's face, unfortunately. By the way, according to IMDb, Zinyak is voiced by J.B. Blanc. In the next scene, we see an army of the Zen Empire walking towards Kinsey's warehouse. We also saw the Zen in Kinsey's warehouse in the first trailer while they were in the middle of combat, so this might be the scene right before that event. There are also some cool new looking alien tanks in this scene as well. Here we see a very interesting force field. I'm not exactly sure what it's guarding, but they definitely don't want you getting in there. I tried my hardest to find this thing on the map, but I just gave up, so if you have any idea where this is, please let me know in the comments below. This looks like the mothership. We see aircrafts all around it, but I'm not exactly sure if this is a place you can fly to or just a place you conveniently warp to, but I definitely have a feeling that inside there is where some missions will take place, and it's possibly where the boss is going to be during the whole simulation. Okay, this is the diner that we all know from Saints Row the Third, except here all the pedestrians look and act like they're from the 1950s. Now in this shot, if you look outside the window, you'll see that it's quite different from the exterior in Saints Row 3. This looks like a house or some other type of building is right outside the diner, where in Saints Row 3, it's just a street. So if this is in the 1950s, the map might have changed dramatically from what we're used to. The person behind the boss looks just like a normal cop or possibly a bodyguard. The interesting thing about this whole scene though is how natural the boss is for the most part. If this is the 1950s, he still doesn't have a problem meeting his fellow citizens. But that also begs the question, how is he the president in the 1950s? If this is in the 1950s, then that would be before he became the president so these people should have no idea who he is. But as we continue on, the boss is then shocked to find out that the person that he's talking to is starting to morph or glitch out. This is when he starts to question what the hell is going on. So at this point, he should know that he's back in time, but he doesn't know that he's in the simulation. Um, okay, I'm overanalyzing at this point, let's move on. Okay, so now we see that this is what puts him in the simulation, and this area could be on the mothership as seen before. If this is the simulation, then what the hell is this machine that we saw in the first trailer? Well, following the story of the Matrix, it's probably just the Saint's own personal way to get in and out of simulations after you break free from the personal simulation that Zinyak forced on you. Now this whole transition is just beautifully done and I hope it's something that we see every time we enter the simulation. Now, I have too many theories on where this portal could actually go. It could either take the boss in and out of the simulation, take the boss somewhere distant like in a spaceship in outer space. It could be anything, so leave me a comment below where you think this portal is going to take the boss. Big action scene taking place here. Definitely a cutscene, so I don't think we'll be getting to drive that ship. The boss is wielding a new laser rifle here. Here's a better shot of the Zinyak statue. There's a Saints member with a gun holster, and in the background looks like another one of the same type. And for some reason, a pedestrian is just walking in the middle of the street. There's a few other new pedestrians in this shot as well. We can also get a real good look at Pierce's outfit here. I have no clue why he's dressed like that. It might be possible to customize Shawnee's and Pierce's outfits as well, but I think he might just be dressed like that. Man, Shawnee looks like shit. She actually looks like she aged. Maybe this is in the future. You can also see a destroyed Saints HQ in the background. Same for Pierce. He looks older here. I have no idea who this chick is, but I think she's Luz Avalos from Saints Row 1 and 2. And of course, there's Benjamin King. <laughs> and then there's Matt Miller. The boss is wearing Mr. Miyagi's headband from the Karate Kid. I'm going to talk about this scene later, but keep this in mind right here. Here's some new alien ships, and this whole area looks like a new map altogether. Here is of course the mech suit, and what could possibly be the mothership. These pods around the side could be people in the simulation. I'm not really sure, it kind of reminds me of the Matrix, but they're rotating so it could be a part of the ship. Um, okay yeah, once again I'm overanalyzing, let's move on. Yellow cars in the background, possibly Vice King gang cars. We finally see a non-alien weapon for once as well. 
Who the fuck is this girl? Anyways, some techie looking shit's going on here. I love the way that the boss and Benjamin interact here. Also, the people on the ground are all wearing yellow, so it does look like the entire Vice King's gang will return. I fucking love this gun. It's most likely a skin of some other gun, but still, it's fucking amazing. And the particle effect is fucking- LOOK AT IT! It's fucking awesome! This could be where Pierce first gets captured by the aliens. Here's Kinsey dancing with a 1950s style outfit on. And some people suggested to me that this could possibly be Gat on the background stage. Now this on the other hand, this is Gat. If you follow my glitch on how to get into the cockpit of the airplane in Saints Row 3, you can see that it's the exact same carpet, couch, and everything. This is where Gat died, and we finally know how he died. With a knife to the chest. So now this begs the question, what exactly is going on in this scene? We know that these simulations are designed to put the saints through their own personal hell, and it's no doubt that Shawnee took Gat's death the hardest. So most likely, her simulation would be reliving the day that Gat died. But if they have a way to go back in time, then this could possibly be a scene where she does go back in time to save Gat. But he's already dead here, so that doesn't make any sense. Hold on, I just thought of something, bear with me. Pierce's fear is being killed by a celebrity, so his simulation is being attacked by those soda cans. Shawnee's fear is Gat dying, so her simulation is to force her to relive his death. Kinsey is a tech freak, so maybe her greatest fear is a world without Wi-Fi, laptops, and cell phones, aka the 1950s. So maybe there is no time travel element in Saints Row 4, but what we're seeing is just the various simulations. So back to this previous scene, this could just be the boss saving Shawnee from her simulation. Oh my fucking god, Shondi's back! I, I, I mean, the real Shondi! But how the fuck did that just happen? Maybe I spoke too soon, maybe there are time travel elements. Let's look at this frame by frame. It starts out with new Shondi reaching her hand out of old Shondi with this glowing blue ray of light which reminds me of the portals that we saw earlier. New Shondi stands up with that usual bitchy look on her face and glares at old Shondi. This whole area back here looks like it could be from Saints Row 2, but I have no memory of where it could be. Now, if new Shondi is the one that's coming out of old Shondi, then that means they're in Stillwater. This whole scene is really confusing, so if you have any theories, leave them in the comments below. Now, this whole area looks like it's from the strip club in Saints Row 3, but it's actually quite different. So this could be an entirely new area. As we continue, we see that this new character is attacking old Tor security. Once again, I'm going to leave it up to you guys to tell me your theories. Keith David? As in the voice actor for Julius Keith David? Just when I thought it couldn't get any more confusing. Keith David. By the way, the gun he's holding is the same one that the boss had earlier. Now here's the black hole gun. It looks absolutely amazing. I love the effect it has. According to the leaked achievements, you get an achievement called Experimental for killing 25 aliens with this gun. Here's the boss in an Elvis style outfit punching a milkman in the nuts. It looks like he has some sort of steampunk style hat on. This is an awesome shot of the mech. I'm not really sure what's going on in this scene, but this could be a young Cyrus Temple. It definitely doesn't look like the boss, so I, I don't really have an idea what's going on here. This is just a cutscene, and I highly doubt you can visit these ships in outer space. But if you can, damn. Well, it seems we finally get to see what Zinyak looks like. Ugly motherfucker. And the boss leaves off with the Ascension Taunt from Saints Row 3. That was amazing. That was fucking awesome. That is how you do it, Volition. Oh my god. This was the only trailer worth a damn. All those fucking stupid downloadable content style trailers were fucking garbage. But this, this is a fucking fantastic trailer. It gave us some really good information to digest and theorize on. I'm fucking so hyped about Saints Row 4 now. I almost want to take back everything I said about Saints Row 4. Almost. But yeah, bottom line, this is a quality trailer. I think they're listening to the fans too. Everyone missed old Shondi, so they fucking brought back old Shondi. Everyone missed the real story-driven and dramatic elements from Saints Row 1 and 2, and they say it's the most dramatic Saints Row game ever. 
In fact, the overall theme of this trailer was dramatic. And that's the right formula from Saints Row 2 that I was talking about in my wishlist video. Have a sincere storyline, but give the player the option to go fucking crazy if they want to instead of shoving it in their faces. That makes everyone happy. Don't get me wrong, we're still getting a game about aliens here, but I feel that they have listened to their fans' desires for the most part. Alright everyone, thank you so much for watching this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please support it by commenting, rating, and subscribing. Thank you.